to you again from here at my Daily Funk Club headquarters. And uh, hey, it's Monday, I'm back in the saddle. Just got done with a busy weekend of gigging. It's summertime and I'm real busy and real grateful to be busy, gigging like a madman and, um, you know, making hay while the sun shines, let's say, you know. Um, you know I'm a full-time musician, it's what I do, so... I need to gig to make my to make my way in this world and this time of year here in Colorado things are really good that way for me with lots of gigs to do and um, I'm fortunate and blessed but uh, now it's it's back to the the week here you know the weekdays and um, I have some time to do some demos so that's what I'm gonna do today I want to show you and talk about the instrument that I'm holding right now and the amplifier that I'm playing through. The, the bass that I have here is one of my favorites. I say that about all my basses because I love them all so much, but this one's special. It's a USA G&L JB. It's kind of um, like a custom order paint job with this metallic red with a matching headstock. Um, has rosewood fingerboard with a nice oversized dots on it, maple neck. Uh, it has a uh, tort pickguard that I bought. Uh, online uh, that I like. I like this tort pick guard. You know, all tort is not created equal, and um, I, I like this one for this instrument. I got it from some company from China. It was only like nine bucks. Took about five weeks to get shipped here, but I mean, for nine bucks, you know, shipped, uh, it's worth the wait. It looks great on the base. It has the Nordstrand NJ4 SV um, hum canceling pickups in it which are fantastic. I love them for the jazz bass because they're absolutely noiseless. So I can go from front pickup to back pickup and it's completely dead quiet. Um, I don't like any noise in my signal pad. I'm kind of a stickler. I'm kind of super picky about that. I don't like fret buzz. I don't like buzz. I don't like hum. I like everything to be really quiet and clean and the notes to just ring real clear. But these, um, these, these Nordstrand uh, Vintage Correct, uh, it's a split coil, so there's two coils in there, you know, like this, and um, they're dead quiet. All the, hardware is, all the hardware is original, stock uh, g &L hardware, which never needs to be replaced. They do a great job with their hardware. And then it has a Sadowski 3-Control drop-in preamp, which sounds amazing. Kudos to Roger Sadowski. Um, you know, Roger is just um, kind of a mogul in the bass business. He's been doing it a long time and knows what needs to be done to make a jazz bass sound killer. These are completely assembled drop-in preamp. It's on the plate. You just drop it in, hook up the wires, and hook a, put a battery in and go for it. It takes like literally about 10 minutes and um, super reliable and, and really, really great sounding preamp. <laughs> Okay, now, the amplifier, this is the GR1 500 head and the 212 cabinet that they custom made for me in this with this blue um, paint job on it. I've used it on several gigs. It's a really, really fantastic amplifier. Um, the head is very simple. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a, um, the, the things that stand out to me about it, most of all, are how well it's built. The head, I'm talking about the head right now. It's built like a tank. It's absolutely 
sturdy, stout, and solid. The knobs and the pots are all um, chassis mounted. So the um, you know the the um, the pot comes through the front of the chassis, and then there's a nut that's cranked down on there, holding it real, real tight. So there's no flex or wobble in the in the knobs, and they turn real hard and slow. So when a, when a pot turns real hard and slow, that's a sign of one that's going to last a long time. When they turn real easy and they wobble, that tells me it's going to wear out. That's just a fact. You know what I'm saying? So this one, it sounds fantastic. It has a four-band EQ. I tend to not even use the EQ because, again, going back to my, my philosophies, I like everything to be flat. It has this thing that's called a pure sound, which bypasses the EQ completely. So I engage that, um, and I just use the, the, the gain control and the master control. Those are the only two controls that I use. It has this LED readout, which goes, it gives you the ability to do a whole bunch of different things. One of them is a tuner, which is really useful. And the other is just various um, ways that the, um, the LEDs flash. No LEDs for those who don't want any LEDs. It's, if it's a distraction, you just turn them on. And then there's the uh, the tuner, and then various different types of LED readout. So that's the head. It's um, it's 800 watts RMS at um, uh, 4 ohms and it the cabinet is the Neo 212 it has two Neo drivers in it and a high frequency horn with an attenuator it's a lightweight cabinet really easy to maneuver and carry around because it's not that heavy but in terms of tone and in terms of punch and low end, the way that it blossoms and the way that it fills up a performance space, it's super impressive. You know, Neo drivers, when they first came out, same thing with the lightweight Class D digital amps when they first came out. I was a hard sell on them. I was not buying into any of that technology. Um, it just didn't deliver for me. I'm talking 10, 15 years ago, 15 years ago. Steadily, the drivers have become much better, and so have the digital power modules, particularly the ICE power, the one that almost everybody uses, has really improved. And then there's another one that's even better that's made by Pascal, which is the best, although that one's a hard one to manufacture with because it costs a lot more than the um, the ice power power module. So if you're going to use the the Pascal power module, it, it's going to make the raise up the production cost, the price of building the the component, the amplifier. So it's going to cost much more uh, uh, on the street. Um, Mark Vanderclay uses the Pascal and um, and a few others, but most of them use the ice power. And it has improved considerably over the years. So let's hear this bass. Uh, we'll go to just the back pickup. So that's a 
that's a great sound. You know, I'm just using no again no EQ. The EQ is bypassed on the on the head. These really nice um, 12 inch drivers. Great bark and bite. This is both pickups. Preamp. Right now I have no tr none of the treble is turned up and the bass is turned up to about 30%. So it's slight bass boost, treble is, treble is all the way cut on the preamp. I can bring the bass up a little bit and get this incredible um, dubby kind of thud tone. been kind of souped up with all the best stuff that I know of. Nordstrand, NJ4, noiseless pickups, Sadowski preamp, and then this incredible, very transparent and um, very well-made GR bass rig from, uh, from Italy. So thank you so much, you know, thanks for watching this video, thanks for watching all the videos, and um, if you're looking for some Great uh, pickups to add to your jazz bass. I highly recommend the Nordstrand NJ4 SV. If you're looking for a great preamp to easily drop into any jazz bass that offers uh, that Sadowski sound, that active sound that um, has become kind of um, um, famous, you know, uh, the, the Sadowski sound, this preamp absolutely does it. And it's simple and it's um, really... Um, something that can be done quickly and something that can give you instant results in in improving the sound of any jazz bass and for sure i want to check out the gr um the offerings from gr bass they have all different kinds of stuff they have a head that has twice as much power as this they have some smaller ones they have some combos and they have various different cabinets they're sending me a couple other things here shortly in fact um, you'll be seeing a lot more of the GR bass stuff here in the very near future, which I'm looking forward to. And, um, yeah, so thanks a lot, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right, friends. Peace.